All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. The much coveted uh, uh, post lunch uh, session, right? I can say anything that I want to say. Only 50% of you will even catch me if I'm wrong, right? <laughs> well, anyways, I'm Subramanian Udayapan. I'm going to be talking about um, uh, you know how we can use AI and automation uh, to tackle today's threats, particularly from a SOC perspective, right? Uh, why are we speaking about this, right? More often than not, most of us think that once I have a SOC in place, I am sorted, which is actually not the case. Even your SOC is facing a lot of challenges today. If you have a SOC that is a first gen SOC, if you have a SOC that is not augmented with AI and automation, then there is a huge amount of challenges that your SOC and SOC analysts are facing. So let's look at what kind of issues could they really be facing, right? And what has changed? When we speak about AI generated threats, why are we specifically talking about AI generated threats? What, what challenge does it actually pose, right? Now this slide has been up here, like for what, 20, 25 seconds? How many of you have spotted at least one ransomware name in this slide? There are five ransomware names in this slide actually. You see, there are five ransomware names. And this is exactly what your SOC analyst is going through. The problem that they have is a problem of noise, of alert fatigue. They are supposed to look at so much of information in matter of seconds. And they are supposed to identify the threat amongst all this noise and also take action. And the biggest issue that we have today, in fact, when we you know, checked with a large number of uh, CISOs, most of them said the problem is that the SOC sees a lots of alerts and also the attack surface is increasing by the day. Previously, I only had to protect my own enterprise, my own organization to be safe. That is no more the case. It changed with the supply chain attacks and now the supply chain attacks have also extended to the software vendors that I use. I'm only buying a software from someone. But what if the software already carries a malware? I'm sure most of you would have seen, particularly if you have friends from, or if you yourself are from the development background, you would have seen a lot of organizations saying, do not pick up codes from GitHub. Do not pick up codes from Docker Hub. The reason for that is the attackers are taking a lot of genuine codes and then they are embedding them with malware and then they are hosting them in GitHub and Docker Hub and places like that. And if you're a developer and you end up picking those codes and you put it as part of your software, then you're you know, selling a software, then you're pushing a software to your customers, which is already bugged, which already has a malware as part of it. So for an organization, today the problem is the attack surface is expanding all the time. And that's where AI can actually help in facing these threats, in facing these challenges. So where does AI really help today? Where do we see the uses of AI uh, in cybersecurity today? So the first thing that we need to tackle is, is AI going to replace human beings? The answer is no. AI is still not ready to replace human beings uh, as yet. Uh, just quickly, I'm sure a lot of you would know, uh, there are four different stages in AI. The uh, machine learning is the dumbest stage, right? I mean, that's the first stage. Machine learning is dumb AI. The second stage is the deep learning stage, which is where we are today as an industry across the globe. You know, uh, we are only in the deep learning stage. All the neural networks that you see, the generative AI, the chat GPTs, everything falls in stage two. Stage three is theory of mind, which is where we will probably be in the next five, 10 years. And stage four is the self-aware stage. When AI reaches the self-aware stage, it means that it's like, you know, AI should be able to understand feelings, which means the AI should be able to evaluate its own actions and reactions. If I do this, how would it affect somebody else? When AI reaches that stage, then it would probably be ready to replace a human being. Until then, AI is still not ready. So the, having got that away, the first thing is today AI can act like a virtual you know, analyst. 
which can augment your SOC teams today, which can augment your security administrators today. It can do things much faster. Any repetitive task, you can automate it. You can use AI to detect the known unknowns. Unknown unknowns still requires human intervention. But with AI, you can detect a lot of known unknowns. It helps in reducing the time to respond. The time to detect and time to respond comes down by using AI and automation. Today, there is no other metric in cyber security that is as important as these two metrics. Anybody else talking about any other metric like I block 99% of the threats, 99.9%, .9 I block 100% of the threats, none of that matters today. All that matters for a SOC, for any organization is MTTD and MTTR. And you should evaluate yourself only against those two matrices and find out how well you are equipped to handle them. And today AI can help in detecting anomalies, which is a huge challenge. More often than not, you would have seen that whenever you see a high profile, you know, a compromise in the newspaper, we all read about it. There is always a forensic analysis that happens. After the forensic analysis, it comes out that there were traces of the attack, but you know, it was missed. The reason for it is there is huge amounts of data. Detecting malware from within that data is very difficult. And then it also helps in threat hunting. Let's look at how it does that, right? Like I said, machine learning is just dumb AI. Machine learning is I keep putting in the same input, it will keep giving me the same output, right? X is always equal to Y. Whereas when it comes to a proper AI, now there are three different types, I would say, in by and large. Uh, that we see in the cyber uh, attack and the cyber security sector. Generative AI, generative AI, uh, to be fair, the attackers use it more than the uh, defenders today. There are, uh, like one of my peers from the industry spoke about the fraud GPTs. Uh, there is a gener uh, generative adversarial networks, GAN, as they are called as, right, which looks at the uh, which looks at the AI models that the cybersecurity products use and generate malware accordingly. They are called as GANs, right? So generative AI is used extensively by the attackers. But uh, the use of it within the cybersecurity industry is still evolving. Whereas when it comes to uh, the deep learning methods of the neural networks and all of them, the predictive AI and discriminative AI are the most used in cybersecurity uh, tools today. And Whenever a vendor speaks about AI and ML, the reason I have the slide up here is whenever anybody talks about AI and ML, you should ask them what kind of AI and ML they are using. Because if people are only talking about regression methods, if people are only talking about machine learning, it, it's not going to cut eyes for you. You really need to look into the models of AI that they use. Because in a predictive AI, it can take input, it can take feedback, it can learn from the earlier outcomes and it can also help in uh, threat hunting because if you are an analyst, imagine that you have an, a high priority alert now, an attack that is happening now. You will only be looking into data that you see on the left side of the screen at that point in time. Even that is overwhelming by the way. If you have a large network and then you have to go through all of those parameters, the IPs, protocols, ports, all of them to find out anomalies, even that is overwhelming. Whereas an AI can go through it not just from that point in time, but it can also look at it historically. It can also analyze historic data and it can change its outcome. It can also take the feedback. If you as a user for let's say the first time, whatever action you take, you take, it will learn from that action. And that's where a predictive AI, a neural network really makes a lot of difference in finding anomalies within the network, which is the proverbial needle within a haystack. If you have to find a needle within a haystack, you should not be going into the haystack and searching for it, right? You just need to have a magnet that big, which can attract it. And that's exactly what an AI gives. The tool is only as good as the person using the tool. So the tool needs to learn from your teams. So what does Fortinet do with all of this? Now, like I said, the most of the things I've looked at it, we've looked at it from a Fortinet uh, point of view. So where are we? How are we incorporating all these technologies, the AI, the ML, the automation that we are talking about? We've built an entire portfolio 
of uh, an AI powered SOC which aims to bring down the mean time to detect and the mean time to respond. And we have an entire portfolio right from building the core platform of a SOC which is your SIMS or whatever the tools are. And if you already have them, then it's time to get ahead of the curve, get into early breach detection and prevention. Which is to say, you could still have components like a deception technology, if you have an OT uh, kind of a network. You still need to find out, you have a lot of tools for not south traffic. You have an endpoint agent, but what happens in the east-west traffic? We have an NDR tool that can help you with that. Do you know what an attacker will see if he has to do a recon on your environment? Recon is a tool that gives an attacker's view to you. It tells you what are the soft spots from the outside. It gives you an outside-in view of your own network. It tells you if there is any chatter about you within the deep dark web. It helps you protect your own brand from being fished, from being used against your customers. So we have an entire range of tools that you can augment to your SOC and all of them come pre-integrated with each other. All of them work with each other and a lot of times I'm sure you would have heard um, uh, the point product vendors talking about having an ecosystem, having opened the APIs and all of that and the problem is that the ecosystem is not sustainable. How many times have we seen the API integrations break between multiple vendors? You could go that way. You could have 40 different, uh, 40, 50 different vendors, products from each of them, take the APIs, do an API integration, maintain that API, which in itself is a humongous task. And on top of it, you know, if one vendor, I've seen this live, one vendor upgrades his API, the other vendor says, you can't upgrade my uh, software. If you upgrade my software to the latest version, this API will break. Now you, you'll have to decide between upgrading this or that. And when you go with a fabric, like Gartner calls it as cyber security mesh architecture, you are not faced with those issues. And to evaluate that, what we did was we asked for a third party to come in and actually tell us also, I mean, we've been advocating this from 2016 onwards as Fortinet, talking about fabric architecture. So we really wanted to know if it's working or not, or are we on the wrong track? And why would Gartner say that uh, organizations, enterprises should look to move to a uh, CSMA, a mesh architecture, right? So we employed a third party, ESG, and we asked them to evaluate if the mesh architecture or the fabric of Fortinet is actually working or not. And when ESG did that, the findings were actually not surprising to us, but it is actually astounding if you look at it. It says, without having the early detection and prevention sensors, without having an integrated architecture, you could take about 168 hours to detect threats. 168 hours is a week. That is the best case. In fact, the, I'm sure all of you would have seen the latest breach detection report says, despite having so many different technologies, we still take 277 days to detect an uh, advanced threat. In fact, from 2020 to 2023, the industry is actually detecting 9% lesser ransomware. In 2023, the SOC was able to detect 22% of the ransomware before it actually could do any damage. In 2023, SOCs are only detecting 13% of the ransomware. The efficacy has gone down and it's because of the threat sophistication going up. And for that, you really need a next generation SOC, a SOC that is powered by AI. You really need to augment the human intelligence that you have with automation and AI. If you see a lot of people moving away from your SOC, it is because your SOC is tiring them out. It is because of the noise that they are seeing. So it means that it's time that you started consciously augmenting. It could be any technology. It doesn't matter what technology that you buy today, but you should definitely look to augment it with AI and um, uh, automation within your SOC. Uh, with that, I come to the end of my presentation. So thank you so much, everyone. We are there as a booth outside. Please feel free to reach out to me.